Good afternoon, Sean here from Mountains Garage. Today's subject is the Turbo 400. We're about the same age. We've both been around a long time, still going strong. We're gonna go over a few details, things to look for when you're working on it, building yourself a performance automatic or a racing transmission. The most popular transmission you're gonna run across is the two wheel drive, 70s and 80s, three quarter and one ton Chevy. Turbo 400 with a bolt-on yoke. It's got a bolt that holds a fixed yoke on. This will work in a two-wheel drive car. If you remove the bolt and the yoke, and potentially the O-ring on the output shaft, I'll cover that later. The rest of it is a perfect candidate for your Turbo LS or your swap or whatever you're doing, because these are heavy duty. You got the deep pan, and they'll make a good transmission. If you have a four-wheel drive core and you want to make a two-wheel drive, it's a simple matter of changing the output shaft on the rear gear set when you have it all apart and buying a tail housing. So they're very interchangeable. They didn't change a lot over the years. They made a few minor changes, but I'll hit a few of them right now. We'll start with the pan. This is the deep version. The shallow is about half the depth. The only difference in the two, other than the depth, is the tube that connects to the case, slides up inside in the right front, and connects to your filter. It even says filter on it, so you can't put it in backwards. And the bolt and washer that secure the filter to the valve body. So if you want to convert, you need those three items. When you buy an aftermarket pan, they give you a new tube and a bolt. And the tube's not as nice as a factory one, but it'll work. Most of them have a cable drive speedometer. If you're lucky, in the 90s, when they continued to build these, in the 88 and up style GMT 400 truck, they went to an electronic pickup and a tone ring on the output shaft. So if you swap it into something that you need an electronic speedometer, like an LS swap, well, parts are available. If you've been around a while working on GMs, you know that they had no trouble mixing metric and standard on the same unit, fasteners. So, most of the time, the linkage nut in the 80s is going to be metric. The bolts and the threads in the case for the speedometer are going to be metric, and the mount bolts on the tail housing are also going to be metric, M10 one and a half. But, it's best to check because you never know what you're going to get, but I can guarantee the tail housing might have been changed, but if the speedometer is metric, the linkage is probably going to be, unless that's been changed, but the aftermarket ones that you buy also fit the 4L80. They came in two lengths. You need the short version for a 4L, early 4L80 or a Turbo 400. The long version is for a 4L80 with the neutral safety switch on the side. The remaining fasteners on the case will be the quarter, five sixteenths, or three eighths course. Back in the mid sixties, when they designed this, and just about the same time they designed the big block Chevy and released it, only ten years after they released the small block, they had some good stuff going on, and we're still, you know, reaping the benefits of some great engineering that happened back then. But in the 80s, I just can't imagine, you know, they're sitting around in a meeting and they decide that they're going to convert this half of the transmission to metric, but the modulator bolt and stuff and everything else is going to remain standard thread. Interesting. So you have yourself a Chevy bell housing. Maybe it's broken. Maybe you just want the convenience of an ultra bell. Or you want to convert a, well, all the other GM brands all use the other bell housing. I'll show you in a minute how Chevy got away with their own bell housing. I'm glad they did, and these are the majority of the ones you're going to find. But if you want to cut the bell housing off to add an aftermarket bell housing, be aware this pump only has six bolts holding it in. The Ultra Bells come with eight holes and matching O rings that you need to do something with. This area here, there's a hole behind there or at least a boss for the hole, and you can drill, drill the pump, drill and tap the case. But the one over here, the case may have the bulge still, 
and most of them they eliminated it. So you're only got, at most going to get seven bolts in your altar bell. Something to think about. Buick, Olds, Pontiac, and Cadillac all use this bell housing. Interestingly enough, this bolt and the dowel pin on all GM engines of that era are the same. But this is an example of a seven bolt pump. This area here is completely void of a boss like this one. This one's tapped. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can't get the eighth bolt, there's nothing there. I just stripped this transmission the other day. Happy to find it's an eight bolt case. It was only equipped with a six bolt pump, but it's ready for an altar bell if it needed one. It doesn't need one and it probably won't get one, but I'll just clean it and keep it in stock in case that situation arises. I just cut this Pontiac bell housing off the other day. It was an eight bolt case and I converted it with an altar bell to fit a small block Ford. It takes me probably five or six hours to strip and clean and sort through and wash all the parts and reassemble you end up with something like this I've been building this for myself for a while collecting some good parts for the inside this one it's still got the 248 stock gear set in the back but it's a straight cut planetaries it's the uh, M22 rock crusher of the turbo 400 if you will uh, supposed to be stronger noisy and I'm okay with that be a pleasant wine uh, this one I was mocking up the safety shields now if you know me at all I'm pretty much pro safety but you know these are still these two units are still in date the red flex plate shield and the red transmission shield I can't ever see anything going wrong with these having a date SFI date that expires is just highway robbery there's no kind and not only that you pay good money for these and they do not fit well at all and I'm being kind I'm in a good mood today I'm not going to use words that I probably should to describe the hassle of just bolting on this thing but it's on there and I'm uh, waiting for the correct dipstick I have a pile of turbo 400 dipsticks but you know they used one bolted really close to this bolt right here and that's the one you need for this because you're not allowed to cut it or modify it any so you got to find a dipstick that goes up through there I refuse to use one of the low car or the Chinese versions of the low car because they're junk. I mean, I, they used to bolt through the case and had a nut inside to prevent the stick from falling out. They did away with that. And you got to put a couple screw holes in your firewall and you got to use a tiny little adapter for your funnel while you're dumping in a case of fluid. And should you need to add fluid somewhere else, you've got to have your little adapter with it. So I'm not going to go through that hassle. I want a nice metal dipstick with a locking stick because that's required by the rules too. If you're going to run one of these if you spend any time around the cases and realize how thin they are you, you wouldn't sit next to it without something to protect you because there's just nothing to, you know that's going to stop any flying parts now these are really good by the virtue of their design in the simpson gear set they don't explode like torque flights and stuff like that but that's not what this video is all about but they make you run this stuff and you should have it the overflow this is going to go behind a turbo ls and if you're going to spend a lot of time on the brake and you get into the faster classes, you should uh, have a way to collect the fluid. GM, well, it's easy to show you on another one. Gave you this plastic tube that just, you know, squirted the fluid down onto the cat converter <laughs> if it overheated. In the 80s trucks, they actually burned up a few and they had a TSB where you hook a rubber hose on that and you'd run it over the driver's side. Again, they smoked a few trucks first, but uh, I drill and tap that eighth inch pipe while it's apart and then I can put a fitting in there and run it down something I can run it somewhere but while I got the transmission all stripped and before I clean it entirely I'm gonna go ahead and drill and tap that otherwise you're gonna fill your transmission full of metal trying to do it afterwards but you gotta get rid of that you need to do something with that at least drill and tap the hole you can leave the hole open if you want to but in the future you'll thank yourself also let me get a better angle that black transmission is a brand name racing transmission case. I took the internals and put it in the reed case for a friend of mine. He gave me the case. So it's a brand name company and it was their race prepped case, which I guess means they're gonna put three quarters of the holes, they have to helicoil them all because this case is well used. 
and I had to finish healing corn on the rest of them because there was nothing left of it. And they did drill and tap that hole, but they went straight in, which makes it almost impossible to get a wrench on it to tighten it. So I just go in pretty much the angle this is a little bit. It doesn't hurt anything with my drill and tap. You can't even notice it with the naked eye, but at least I can put my fit in there without talking to myself. This overflow tank is a Jags, and I gotta give them credit. It's it's actually not bad. The welds and stuff are decent on it. I don't like this. I actually wanted to put a 90 degree fitting and run that vent out under the back of the transmission, but there's just no room for it. And I don't like that style of vent that are open to the top, but I guess the worst that can happen is this might get water in it if it somehow get wet, but it's not gonna get up into the transmission and it has a drain. You gotta be careful moving the transmission around with this bolted on. You're not gonna wipe the drain off, but all in all, it's not a bad piece. I was gonna build one and then this one, uh, came up cheap new in the box and uh you know, you know i can critique it and improve it if i make another one for myself that's what hot rodding's all about this case is a six bolt case and there's no need to change it right now it's uh you know as far as just holding the pump into the case we're not talking about adding a bell housing this functions just fine i think i mentioned in another video that i actually bought this tail housing because i was running low on them and lately, every uh, rear bushing I install in a used tail housing, I end up having to hone it for the yoke to fit. And I was glad when I bought this FTI unit. And the yoke fits right out of the box. That's awesome. I got another weird streak going on. This is a direct clutch drum. And this area here, this is your sprag on the back. It, I've got the cover off it, but... It's made to rotate clockwise and should not rotate counterclockwise. If you look at this one, this area right here is completely round. You don't see a lot of these in the wild. They only come with a 16 element sprag, 16 rollers. But the 34, the heavy duty one that GM used when they first started building the Turbo 400, and then they went away from this and they had this roller and spring arrangement and this drum actually looks like it has little ski slopes every couple inches that the roll is actually hooked into now this is the strongest 34 element but they get tired of paying Borgwana or who knows what happened this is manufactured by Borgwana and some only had a 16 which is interchangeable which is awesome so the 16 is weaker than this this is the most popular one you're gonna find and you cannot put the 34 element on that direct drum because it's not round. This one needs to be round. I've stripped four transmissions recently and they all have a round drum with the weaker sprag, but you know, for 30, 40 bucks, you can buy the, well, 40 to 60, depending on where you buy it. You can convert the rear sprag to the heavy duty one and up to a very high horsepower level, the Pro Mod Direct drum has a 36 element, you know, that's for three or 4,000 horsepower, but this will take pretty much anything I can afford to throw at it. Simply you pop out the snap ring, all the outer rings are the same, so if you need the outer ring off that style, they're all the same. And you literally pull it off, push the new one in the correct direction. Now, if you put it on and it freewheels the other way, well, you get another chance to take it apart. Ask the freewheel to the right, if you're looking at the back of it, this is actually the back of it facing the rear of the transmission. Another area to watch out for is the cool line fittings. I've converted these to dash six AN. That's just a cap. I got over the line, but you see the washer behind this fitting. That means the case has straight threads. They also made them that had pipe thread and they sell a fitting and fitting for that. I keep saying fitting fitting for that. <laughs> just, do not try to interchange them because uh, then you're going to need another case. So these should thread in all the way by hand and you just tighten the last bit. A pipe thread, as you well know, seals on the threads and probably only goes halfway in. When it starts getting tight, you're, you're done. Just like that fitting right there for the overflow. It's pipe thread. You'll see it sticking out. That not sticking out. The Turbo 400 came in probably three or four different output shaft and tail housing combinations. This is what you want. It's the short version. 
four and a half inch they call it or the short output turbo 400 it has a 32 spline output takes the big yoke like the super t10 four speed it uh is worth swapping if you have something else or another transmission sticking around they have a, a long version of the output you know that went way back to here had a th350 sized spline and yoke called the th375 they also weakened the inside it had less clutches and stuff but you could modify that but if you're going to convert something to build the drive shafts hunt out this stuff because like this output shaft here if it's out of the case, it's about nine and a half inches long, but it builds a four and a half inch short output turbo 400. Yeah, two wheel drive car, the bolt on yoke truck. The TH475 also has the correct output shaft length. You can just buy the tail housing and convert it over to a car, which is pretty much my uh, standard MO. You'll know you might have stumbled across the TH-475 when it has this big, ugly tail housing with bearings in it and used to have, and may still have, a giant pocket brake bolted to it. If you find this, it has the right output shaft. That's a 475 output shaft installed in this two-wheel drive transmission for a car. Still got the threaded hole. Doesn't matter. But... You can convert that, and, and the bonus of this is it has a straight cut planetary gears, which are noisy but stronger, they say. That's why they put them in the big trucks. Looking up into the back of the Turbo 400, this unit has a plastic speedometer drive gear. They all have a plastic driven gear that comes out through the case. There's plenty of drive and driven gears available in plastic, so you can probably match your tire height and rear end ratio. However, most Turbo 400s have a pressed-on steel gear, which kind of limits your drive possibilities because they only came in two or three ra available ratios from the factory in the trucks. So a car is probably going to have a plastic gear set, no problem. You can run about any ratio you want. The truck, it kind of limits your possibilities, but no big deal. This is the O-ring I was speaking of. Now, I spent a lot of time telling you how to convert a bolt-on yoke to a car, Mostly because you're going to find a lot more of these when you're searching for them. But this O-ring here has no use in a two-wheel drive car or truck for that. If you're running a slip yoke, just take that off. It pops right off. It's just an O-ring. The reason being, this is your standard short yoke. It won't even reach it. No big deal. So you'll be happily slipping back here. Won't be a factor. This yoke here is the same length, built with a recess. That actually goes up over the O-ring if you want it to, but it's going to be a hell of a bind when it hits. You can't even get it back off. So these yokes do exist with a recess that were made to go slide up over there, but you just don't need it. The car's never had it that I'm aware of, and you have an output shaft seal and the yoke's sealed. There's just no need for that O-ring. They used it on the bolt-on yoke to prevent fluid from coming down and probably leaking out around the bolt. And I've never taken a two-wheel drive car apart output shaft with no threads that had the O-ring groove. But I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying you don't need it. As you're probably aware, in the LS engine is a water jacket behind where that bolt used to be for the bell housing. And they went back to using this one that GM used in the 50s and 60s. If you got an old power glide, you already have that hole, most of them, or you can drill it. There's a flange sticking up there. But for most six bolt bell housings with an LS swap using a Turbo 400, you just are going to omit that bolt. It runs just fine on five, but it leads to a little trouble. Let me explain. My dipstick that I ordered that I hope fits through this hole is going to bolt on there, and so does this shield. I can't leave the shield with only three bolts holding it on, but in a happy circumstance, 4L80 or Turbo 400 does not matter. The hole in the bell housing is the correct size for a 3 8 helicoil tap. So I tap that hole, put the helicoil in it, make sure it doesn't stick out beyond there, knock the tang off, and now I can just thread a bolt in here and make sure it also remains flush or below, and I can bolt all my accessories on 
it's actually kind of handy. You can uh, have it all bolted on before you put it up in the car. You don't have to fish around for that bolt and it holds all your stuff on. It actually makes it easier. I'll finish up by talking about trans brake valve bodies. You have two styles, external solenoid or internal solenoid. Internal, they put it in the pan. This is an external. If I could do this, there's a good chance the valve's working and the brake's gonna work. If that's an internal solenoid, I have no way to check it other than to pull the pan off and look. And they do have a tendency to get stuck every now and then. You have a manual valve body if your governor cover's turned around backwards or they have an aftermarket cover or something on it because with a manual valve body and a, and a transmission brake, valve body is also manual, be it forward or reverse pattern. You throw away a, well, not quite a third of the parts inside a turbo 400, but there's a lot of stuff you can chuck that no longer have a function, which is kind of cool. But if you're shopping for an internal solenoid trans brake, the 12 volts is going to go through the case connector that the electronic kickdown used to use. It's kind of a slick rig. Things you have to watch out for with trans brake valve bodies is there's a lot of different versions. Most don't use gaskets nowadays. They used to. Sometimes they were custom gaskets. Uh, sometimes, like the one I just installed in that black transmission, you actually drive a check ball in that hole way down there. I'd call that a permanent mod because I don't think you're going to get it back out ever. You also put a cup plug on one of the direct clutch feeds. And most all trans brakes want you to Cut that little bridge down a little bit if so for better oil flow. It certainly won't hurt on any of them, but especially the external, because that's your modulator valve and your solenoids right there, and that's where your fluid's got to flow. And I think it probably quickens it up if you lower that with a Dremel tool. So if you're reusing a case, for instance, that black transmission had a different brand valve body in it, and I had to look it over pretty good to make sure there was no other changes that were going to mess me up. And I'd say follow the instructions with the trans brake valve body, but I put a few of the very popular internal solenoid billet ones, and the instructions is, they are terrible. Uh, but that's life. A couple final thoughts. Always run a mount. If you've got a tube chassis car, a lot of chassis shops will mount that solid. I don't mind mounting the engine solid, but I always mount the transmission on a poly mount. Uh, a poly mount and stock rubber motor mounts on the front of the engine is probably not a good combination either, but it, it'll work. But it, all it does is put torsional stress in your case, and the case just isn't that strong. While I'm right here, you can see I drive a cup plug in for the speedometer on this one because, uh, while it's going to be a street car, I'm going to have a GPS speedometer. I'm not going to have to worry about ratios or driving driven gears on the speedo just not gonna be a problem all right that's gonna do it turbo 400 some information uh please like and subscribe uh same thing i say always i guess everybody says that but i sure could use more subscribers thanks for watching Bye bye